C7.3 reaction profiles. Every reaction undergoes the same process of bond breaking and bond making. So we've got an example here of methane reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So we've shown the molecules here, just need to explain what's going on. Each methane molecule has one carbon and it's bonded to four hydrogen atoms. Oxygen is bonded to another oxygen. Carbon here is bonded to oxygen. These bonds are double. And all the bonds that we're showing here are covalent because it's non-metal bonded to non-metal. Each bond has a different strength. So the bond between the double bond between two oxygen atoms will have a different strength to the bond between a carbon and a hydrogen. And the bond between carbon and oxygen is different again, and oxygen and hydrogen is different again. Okay? That will feed into subsequent lessons that will be coming too. We don't need to worry too much about that at the moment, just appreciate that they have different strengths. So when we react, we go through a process of breaking these bonds and forming new ones. Okay. Now, bonds in the reactants have to be broken and new bonds are formed when all of our atoms are rearranged. And that forms our products. To break those bonds, we need to put heat energy in. So this process is endothermic. Heat energy goes in, it enters. Whereas here, when new bonds are formed, heat energy is released. So this is an exothermic process. So for every single reaction, you will have an endothermic process and an exothermic process. Energy that is taken to break the bonds, energy released when new bonds are formed. Now, you end up with an overall exothermic endothermic because you will find that in some reactions, the endothermic process requires much more energy than the energy that is released. So if this is greater than that, overall you'll have an endothermic reaction. And if this is greater in value than that, you'll have an exothermic reaction. Each reaction will be different. In this case, this is an exothermic reaction. We know that because this is burning methane gas which is what we do when we light a Bunsen burner or we use the gas hob at home. Okay, so what we need to look at next is the actual profile itself. Now the profile <coughs> is a standard format. You need to learn this and you will be expected to reproduce it in the exam. So we have two axes, energy on this side, so energy increases as we go up and Along the bottom here we have the reaction pathway or time. This is the progress of the reaction. We start off with reactants here, so we have our methane and oxygen. And we need to put energy in to break those bonds. So then all of the bonds are broken and all of the atoms just floating around. Okay, no bonds between them. And then we form our products when new bonds are formed. And we can see here the carbon dioxide and the water. So to break the bonds, we have to put energy in. And this arrow represents that energy. It's known as the energy of activation or activation energy. This is the amount of energy that's required to make a reaction go for it to happen. The difference between the reactants energy level and the products energy level is known as delta H. This is the enthalpy of the reaction. So delta is a Greek letter, meaning the change in H is the enthalpy. So it's the change in enthalpy or energy of the system. If it's positive, then we have an endothermic reaction because the energy we put in to break the bonds is much bigger than the energy that is released on this side when new bonds formed. So overall, 
the products have more energy than the reactants. The opposite happens here. This is an exothermic reaction, so in this case, the amount of energy, activation energy, to break those bonds in the reactants is lower than the energy that is released when new bonds are formed, which is this area here. Okay, so delta H, the enthalpy change is going to be negative, which means it's an exothermic reaction. So the products have got less energy than the reactants.